Greetings everyone! Our upcoming Age of Sigma battle report is right around the corner, but to defend our watermill, I have to paint some free guild guard to fill out the ranks of the mortal men and stave off Jazz's cruel boy oryx. I've got a lot to work on today, I'm painting 20 models as well as a character, so I'm gonna need some advanced tools that can really help me out in getting this project done. All right, we've been taking lots of efforts to improve things around here, and um, I'm gonna use one of the tools that Jazzy used in his Mud Lads video. So we've been storing this one here for a couple of weeks. Hey, Murray. Can I come out? Yeah, you ready to paint some models? I've been in here since the last video. <laughs> yeah, it's tabletop, tabletop time. time. I'm Dave. And I'm Murray. And today, as I mentioned, we're gonna be painting a whole bunch of Freegal Guard. This video is sponsored by Titan Forge, and their Patreon this month is making some amazing old city models that are perfect for our Age of Sigma battle report. A great way to paint models really fast is using Citadel contrast paints. But we're gonna see how that stacks up against the Scale 75 instant color range. All right, so Mari, what are you thinking? What do you think the outcome is gonna be? Do you have any bets on who you think is gonna be the better result? I think the contrast will probably give us some really nice gradients. The scale colors might almost have more interesting I have heard from reviews that these are thinner than contrast. So I have a feeling it's gonna be a little bit more akin to glazing on white with the scale 75. Oh. So I think we're gonna get less color saturation, whereas the Citadel, some of them are just like, boom, heavy color saturation straight away. So now we'll try it out. Fantastic. I have no experience with them, so I'm looking forward to finding out. Let's find out. So we were going to be making a full squad of 10 guardsmen and a squad of 10 archers. That's a lot of models. And one of the things I love about 3D printing is the ability to create variants in your models in the 3D slicing software. It's incredibly easy to change the scale of models. I just slid them 5% up or 5% down to give a little bit of scale across the squad and add even more variants to the very cool designs from Titan Forge. Further to this, you can also mirror up models on the X axis, creating more diversity amongst your ranks with some left-handed warriors. Now, one of the things I forgot to do here is make sure that I mirrored the hex axis on the hands. There was a couple of models that I flipped the weapon in the model and uh and at the time of filming this didn't print the right hand so we've got a couple of wounded soldiers sans a hand in our squad but that's fine with the minis printed I cleaned them up and then soaked them in a little bit of hot water to ease off those supports the supports came off quickly and easily and with a little bit of trimming and filing with some knives I had models ready to cure I paired the pieces together and put them in plastic containers ensuring that I wouldn't get them mixed up and I'd be able to match the right scaled parts to the right scaled bodies with a quick spin in our curing stage the models were ready to assemble. The models went together smoothly and easily. With the already extensive options available, expanded by me flipping the models or changing the scale, we had two incredibly mixed squads that look really great, but also have a lot of variance between the models. All of the models were based on 25 millimeter bases, which weirdly felt like a little flashback to the past. A lot of models are on 28 or 32 mil bases now, and it was fun to rank them up on the now tiny bases by comparison. But talking about the sculpt aside, it's time to talk about the painting. The flesh colors from Citadel do do fairly well. Choosing a fairly standard brown that would represent the color of the gambeson, maybe a hide finish to it, I painted on all those areas, wanting to keep the model looking fairly muted. When painting traditional medieval models, especially town guard or the like, I tend towards natural colors, as from those historical settings, dyes were traditionally fairly expensive. The tabard and the pants, I painted green and a bone color, again, keeping to the fairly muted color scheme. Basilicanum gray was my choice for the armor and it came out really well. I think that the gray emulates a kind of soft non-metallic metal in an extremely basic way, but these are contrast paints that we're talking about. So an approximation of a metallic is all we're going for. Saigor brown was my paint of choice for the wooden hafts, handles and leather straps. And the Citadel contrast paints do tend towards very dark browns. Now contrast paints I'm already fairly familiar with. So I'm very curious to see how the instant alchemy range stacks up. So I'm gonna move 
move on to an archer and paint it using those colors. If contrast was the baseline that I'm familiar with, I guess we'll see most of my negatives and positives coming out of the instant alchemy range. I found the base coat kind of terrible. I went for the bone white and despite attempting multiple mixes with the airbrush to get it on smoothly, using different ratios of airbrush thinner, water and the paint itself, I could not get this to come out of the airbrush smooth. It was sputtering and not a particularly pleasant experience. And at the end of the day, the coverage wasn't that good either. I did attempt to brush on paint this primer onto another model and that did get a much better result. However, the speed lost in brush on priming versus being able to just spray out of a rattle can was something I didn't really appreciate. And ultimately the finished product was something akin to what a wraith bone spray prime would be from the Citadel range. So this is definitely one tick in the favor of the Citadel contrast range. I've not known a paint to somehow be simultaneously incredibly thick and incredibly thin, but that's what this paint felt like. It felt thick and difficult to work with, but then the actual coverage and opacity of the paint was minimal. So as a foundational layer, it was not satisfying to say the least. Now the finished color such as it was, was creamy and nice. I did like the tone, but I, yeah, the process of getting to there was just not worth it. Sorry, scale 75, I adore your metallics. I do not love your instant alchemy primer. There are elements between the squads I did want to look relatively uniform. So I picked a gray as close to that Basilicanum gray as I could from the Instant Alchemy range. And I think it did a fairly good job. In general, I found that the Instant Alchemy range was a little bit more watery in the way that it went down, which has its pros and cons. I don't think it's a negative or a positive. I just think it means you need to apply them in different ways. In particular, the modeled effect did work well for armor and cloth, but it maybe wouldn't work so well for other areas. Painting across flat, surfaces such as vehicles, especially for sci-fi, has never been a strength of contrast and I don't think it's a strength of instant alchemy either. Now here's a point I'm going to make that is neither a negative or a positive. This is just an experience. When you're first learning to use contrast and instant alchemy by the same measure, it is very clear that you need to get a handle on what the paint looks like in the bottle and on the swatch versus what it looks like on the model. Now this is true for every paint. So I can't call it a negative and I can't call it a positive. It's just part of the experience. A couple of the colors I laid down here, especially the yellow to me came out very differently to how I thought they would. And ultimately on the model, I didn't like the effect. That isn't to say the color was bad or the experience was bad, just that I hadn't gotten used to what colors to use for what things yet. And that's fine. That's part of the experience and it's part of why we do videos like this to explore how to use these new tools. The boots was another example of this. I was expecting a far darker, more leathery tone, but the ultimate effect was much lighter. I do like the color, but not for boots. Now here is where I can come in and bat for instant alchemy because their skin made me so happy. This was a really pale skin tone and it's something that Citadel colors just doesn't have. I feel like if you want to paint sort of a Northern Scotsman or someone with that really, really pale skin tone, you can't do it with contrast paints. They always come out sort of three skin tones darker than you're aiming for. So I absolutely appreciated this skin tone and would be adding it to my roster of contrast equivalent skin tones. Conversely, when I whipped out the Grizzly Brown and it basically came out to be red, well, I was confused. It's a fine color, but again, another example of me not being familiar with the swatch. So I'm not gonna give that as a hit, just something where I was extremely surprised that the finished color, uh, well, yeah. I guess some of these come down to coverage, not pigment. And when the coverage goes down and there's sort of a warm bone color underneath, it really affects the finished look. The green paint was fairly comparable for a light lime greeny color or olive green color. It's actually something I quite like, a yellow toned soft green. Again, it's a color that Citadel Contrast just doesn't really have a good example of. So another color that I was really happy with. Here it was, Endurance brown. Honestly, my favorite paint I found dabbling with the Scale 75 kit. This is awesome and there is no contrast paint like it. It is a really nice take all comers mid-tone leather color that is just fantastic and it's something I wish I had in the contrast range when I was painting a lot of models. I'd always reach for a good mid-tone brown that wasn't red hued or orange hued and here it is. Fantastic paint, really good coverage and it gives you the effect of just standard leather. I continued in this way, picking out various colors and experimenting, learning more of the range and playing around as I pushed the paint around on the model.
Now I'll be sharing my final thoughts with Murray towards the end of the video because I'm really interested to see what he comes up with and if his opinions align with mine. But now I want to take a bit of time to talk about our awesome sponsor Titanforge. You've seen some of these amazing minis and now let's talk about where you can get them. So in this video we made the absolute most of the awesome Town Guard available from Titanforge's September release the old city. They have some fantastic models oozing with character. Really, we just painted the group troops. When you look at these jesters with their awesome posing, we have this amazing siege giant mounted with Town Guard. There's just so much to love in the September release. We understand this video is coming out late in September, so we thought we'd talk a little bit about next month on Titanforge Patreon. The theme for that month will be animal folk. I absolutely love these, especially the cute little rabbit folk who are gonna murder you. They're like taking the evil white rabbit from Monty Python to the next level. These little cutthroats are gonna come for you. <laughs> if you aren't familiar with Titanforge's Patreon, every month they release a whole new set of miniatures for the low price of just $10 that are available for you to 3D print. All their models after each month are available on my mini factory. And in fact, if you become a patron of Titanforge, you also get a sweet discount off all of their products on my mini factory. So you can catch up on the older months at a very handsome discount with models for wargaming or for D&D or anything in between. Thank you once again for the sponsorship. I really do love the models they put out. They've got so much character and I cannot wait to print my very own Siege Giant with Mounted Town Guard because it is so cool. And Gargants fighting in a Free Cities army. Yeah, I can get behind that. I started by cleaning up the resin, carefully trimming away the struts from the models, trying to tidy them up as carefully as possible, especially around fragile areas like the feather crests and any outstretched fingers. Contrast paints have a range of applications and can be diluted down to create glazes or simply softer colors. Contrast's main strength is to have a nice striking finish to a model that is quickly ready to be played on a tabletop. And while they can be diluted or watered down, most people just try to go for the one pass and it's done, which is, arguably its strength. The main thing on my mind in this comparison is whether the scale colors will cover as well in a single pass. My plan for the scale colors was just to apply as many colors onto different areas to see what effects I could get and what applications they might hold for the other models and other textures. This will probably result in some pretty wild colorings on these guardsmen, but hopefully it looks really good. I decided my first approach would be to dive into the scale 75 range, looking for similar colors to the contrast range that we're all used to now. I started by searching for the more natural colors and hues that would be more appropriate to guardsmen or peasants who had been armed by their lord. However, I was immediately surprised by the behavior of the scale 75 paints in comparison to the contrast paints. They were a lot more watery, almost like watercolor paints. Quickly deciding that I wasn't really gonna get much of an accurate comparison in exact colors between the ranges. I decided to mix things up a bit and just see what colors I could find. This may have resulted in some more interesting and flamboyant guardsmen, but hey, some of the better discoveries along the way were actually paints that would not be suitable for a guardsman at all. We found greens that were amazing for orcs, great tans and browns for leather, wood. I'm already preferring a lot of them to contrast colors. The scale 75 range varied hugely between pigment strength. Some colors were very faint, almost like a glaze, while others were very similar to the contrast in overpowering and really delivering a good punch of color. The instant colors flowed extremely well, possibly too well. One of the better points of contrast paints is how they will sit in an area. The instant paints behaved a lot more like a wash and would flow very quickly into the recesses. This resulted in a very quick method to paint things lightly. But if you want to sit down and paint things in one coat and get them done quickly, it wasn't so optimal. While some colors were less pleasing on an initial pass, some colors were instant favorites. Worked beautifully in a single coat and were stunning to the hold. I tried as many variances of the primary colors as possible, trying to find the strongest pigmentation in these colors. Endurance Brown was by far my strongest love in this set. It was a fantastic, strong, vibrant brown. It could be used for wood, pelts, leather. It was fantastic and I had to use it as much as possible. Salmon Fury was an amazingly strong ruddy pink, but uh, perhaps not the best choice for a skin tone. The Blood Angels Red contrast paint is notorious for how strong its pigmentation is. I wanted to see if the scale colors could match that intensity. To my delight, some of them did. Shadow Black and Remove Mana were the two darkest colors in the range and provided really nice shades for blacks and very dark grays with just a slight blue tint to them. I finally settled on Rotten Pus for 
are my favorite in the yellows. An absolutely striking first coat application, which left a more vibrant yellow as opposed to the contrast range, which held this very strong orange tint to the shade in it. For the Militia Sergeant, I wanted to try and get the best of both worlds to really push what both ranges had to offer. That being said, I selected my favourites from each range and set about trying to create an interesting scheme that would still tie him back to the rest of his troops. Scale 75's Golem Grey gave a really interesting, almost greeny mottled effect for the armour, so I kept that one. I wanted the cloak to be a rich, vibrant red that like screened his seniority over the rest of the troops. Blood Angel's Red is an excellent colour and would have served well, but the health red had a real luster to it, so I decided to stick with that one, applying two very liberal coats, something you shouldn't do with washes, but I wanted to see how much I could get the colour to pop. For the skin, I elected to use a darker, more tanned phoenix feather for the base tones, and then touched in some Blood Angels Red to give a ruddied complexion. For the command sash on the chest, I decided to bring back Salmon Fury, that amazingly tense pink. It'd create a cool silk effect that would really pop on his chest. To be really fancy, we decided we'd make him stand out even more by using some gold effects using the scale and contrast range. I started using the scale 75 full healing yellow, which was blissfully strong and an excellent paint. I then shaded that down with contrast paints, leading down to Wildwood Brown for that darkest touch. To try and move the eye around the miniature, I again decided to use scale 75 colours in the form of replenished blue. All right, so here we are. Murray has been painting his little fingers off over the last couple of days, finishing out these models. Now we have some similar opinions. I think we've kind of landed on the same conclusions. I found that the contrast was uh, what contrast is and the Scale 75 paints was an interesting addition. What did you think? They were very translucent and flowing. You got this very soft, tint of colour over the base coat and then you got this really rich strong colour inside the recesses. And some of the Citadel contrast paints do that, uh, like Ethermatic Blue comes to mind, but I feel like most of the Scale 75 range behaved more like the lower opacity uh, yeah. paints in the contrast range. Certainly a few colours I'll be adding to my repertoire. That Endurance Brown is perfect, so I'm looking forward to that. And if you have enjoyed being on this journey, please click subscribe for more cool videos and thank you to all our patrons for all your support. Through your support, we make these videos. So yeah, sick. thanks. Thanks for sticking around. Traditionally, we end with a, with like an awkward outro. Um, so yeah, I don't know how we can do that. Look, we don't really have time. It's close to the end of the day. So I reckon we just put you back in the cupboard. Can I keep the light on for an extra hour tonight? All right, half an hour, because you've done very well. Thank you. It gets cold.